This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Easily taking more than 15 hours, Philippine Airlines Manila to New York route is amongst the longest in the world. And making a 15 hour flight comfortable is a challenge for every airline, but even more so for a carrier with such a tumultuous history. But Philippine Airlines ended up delighting with its fantastic crews and great service, something that I'm excited to share in detail with you in today's episode of Brutally Honest. Let's get into it. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers, hello and good morning from Bangkok, Thailand, where we're starting our journey to the other end of the world today, via Manila to New York City. I've booked this trip a couple of months ago when it was a steal, costing me just 425 US dollars one way, including two checked bags weighing up to 23 kilograms each. Before we get to our exciting ultra long haul flight to New York, we have to go from Bangkok to Manila. Bangkok has two major airports, both of which are easily reachable by train. In the city's north, you'll find Don Moyang Airport, which you can reach via the SRT Dark Red Line that connects the airport to Bangkok's new central station, Bang Sue. Don Moyang is Bangkok's old airport and since the opening of Suvarnabhum, mainly caters to low-cost carriers. We have a video coming up about Thai low-cost airline Nok Air on a domestic flight from Don Moyang, so make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you won't miss that or any other of our many upcoming videos. We're departing from Bangkok's main international gateway, Suvarnabhum International Airport, situated to the east of the city. The airport is connected to the city via the airport rail link, which starts at Paya Thai and costs at most just 45 Thai baht or around $1.30. It's one of the cheapest ways to get to the airport and brings you directly under Suvarnabhum's main terminal. There's quite the line of check-in behind us, but since we arrived early, we were able to get it done fairly quickly. And of course, our flight departs from the very last gate of the concourse. Our three-hour flight to Manila is operated by RP-C9901, a 2013-built Airbus A321. All of Philippine Airlines A321s, including the NEOs, have three rows of business class up front in a 2-2 configuration. These A321 CEOs and the short-haul NEOs have recliner seats, while those NEOs used on longer flights actually have live flat seats, as you can see in the flight review by fellow air travel YouTuber Josh Cahill. Behind the curtain, you'll find 187 economy class seats on this A321CO, featuring the standard 3-3 configuration. Each seat has an adjustable headrest, which isn't as common on short-haul flights as it is on long-haul flights, so PAL having it is certainly a plus. The legroom is fine as well, being 180 centimeters tall, I have no problem with that. The seat also comes with a standard seat back pocket and a tray table. However, the plane does not have power ports, a USB port or an entertainment system installed. With that being said, let's get going. We're pushing back around an hour late because our flight also arrived a bit late from Manila, but that's no problem for us, having a 25 and a half hour layover in Manila. The reason being that in the beginning I had a booking for flights with just a normal brief layover, but my Manila to New York flight was cancelled a couple of weeks out, so when they asked me whether I want a refund or to be rebooked, I told them just book me on a flight to New York one day earlier, but the Bangkok flight two days earlier, so I get to explore Manila a bit since I've never been to the city before, and I'm excited to spend some time in what I've heard is one of Asia's craziest cities.
right after takeoff, a complimentary lunch service was offered, and one that actually looks really good. For the main course, we've got some roasted chicken with steamed white rice and green beans, served alongside a cold bread roll and some unsalted butter, as well as a little butterscotch bar and a pack of the classic Philippine Airlines in-flight snack, crispy green peas with dried bits of mango. A bottle of water was provided as well, and another beverage of your choice. All in all, for a three-hour flight, phenomenal. The plane is actually equipped with Wi-Fi, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get it to work properly. And now we're already starting our descent into Manila. Here we are, welcome to Ninoy Aquino International Airport, locally known as just Naya. And dear Filipino viewers, I love you and I love your country, but Ninoy Aquino International Airport is by all measures one of the worst I have ever been to, particularly Terminal 2, from which Philippine Airlines operates out of. It's small, overcrowded, dark, damp, hot, there is a new airport currently under construction in Manila, and it can't open soon enough. The current airport has four different terminals, which are all placed as far apart as you could possibly place them, making transiting between them almost impossible. And see that small one in the center? That's where all of Philippine Airlines is squeezed into. And a rail link from the airport into the city? Of course that doesn't exist either, so I ended up grossly overpaying for a driver. I, I wanted a metered taxi, but gave up after waiting in line for almost an hour and ended up paying 1500 pesos for a driver to Makati. Anyway, I highly enjoyed my time in Manila, particularly to finally eat at my beloved Jollibee in its home country. In comparison to the 1500 pesos I paid for the driver yesterday, when I returned to the airport today, I caught a meter taxi from Greenbelt Mall and had to pay only 200 pesos. Ah, anyway, we're back at Naya for our flight to New York. Or maybe, maybe we're not. After an initial burst of frustration, I just have to say how incredibly impressed I am with how Philippine Airlines handled this flight cancellation. Staff was proactively seeking out passengers to New York and directed them to the ticket office, where staff told me that they are putting up a special flight tomorrow at the same time to take everyone to New York. And for those that really needed to go there quickly, they rebooked them onto their other US-bound flights, but only had limited seats available on them, of course. I opted to travel on the special flight the next day because I chose this flight to New York particularly to show you guys what the A350 was like, so a middle seat to Los Angeles on a 777 would just do no good for the video. They rebooked me and told me I could already check in at the counters, which I did, so I had my boarding pass for tomorrow already in my hand. And then there were buses already waiting for us outside the terminal, which took us directly to our already paid for hotel. We're staying at the Century Park Hotel, a four-star hotel which is Philippine Airlines' go-to property for flight disruptions. I got a really nice room with a bathtub and a comfy bed and a view over the city. The hotel also came with a nice outdoor area, including a pool and a hot tub, which I made good use of. 
and it also included lunch and dinner buffet today, as well as breakfast the next day. And splendid buffets at that. We're being picked up by buses again, and now we're on our way back to the airport. Of course, any flight disruption is annoying, and I also lost a non-refundable hotel night in New York because of this. But all things considered, if I experience what basically amounts to a 24-hour delay, please handle it like this. That whole experience was as seamless as it could have been, and I have nothing but respect for how Philippine Airlines handled this. Now we're back at Nino Aquino Airport, and one thing they don't play around with here is security. You had to put your back through a scanner when entering the terminal building and were only allowed to enter the terminal at all with a flight ticket. And then for US bound flights, they also had a separate check-in area where you had to open your suitcase and get it checked before dropping it off at the counter. After that, regular security and passport control. And while I love that the airport allows you to refill your water bottles for free after security, US bound flights had another, at this point a fourth, security check directly at the gate, where among other things, you were not allowed to take any liquids on board. Not the usual 100 milliliter rule, absolutely nothing. Thank God I'm not traveling with expensive cologne. But I did have to empty my water bottle into this crate, which felt weird, but that's just what they told me to do. After getting our documents checked one last time, we're finally ready to board. Tonight we're flying aboard RPC-3501, a 2018 built Abbas A350. This is one of just two A350s left in Philippine Airlines fleet, after they've sold all of their other A350s to Lufthansa during the pandemic. And that's also the reason why our flight was rescheduled. You see, one of their two planes had a technical problem that needed to be fixed right away, and the only other A350 they had was in Vancouver yesterday. So our original flight, PR-126, was put up today when no New York flight was supposed to take place, and that's why we also got a special flight number, PR-5126. Remember how I told you in the beginning that my flight was cancelled a few weeks out and I was rebooked? Well, ironically, today is the day I originally wanted to fly to New York anyway. Philippine Airlines A350s have three classes. Up front, you'll find a one to one configured business class featuring the Thompson Vantage XL seats. followed by three rows of a 242 configured premium economy class with a Safran 5810 seats. Economy class had the standard 33 configuration found on most A350s, featuring the Z300 seats also made by Safran. The cabin design was made by Tokyo-based Lift Aero Design and is intended to evoke and, I quote, unmistakably Filipino feeling. For example, the carpet features a background of dark blue representing the deep sea with tiny dots in turquoise in a vertical pattern of alternating waves supposed to represent the sea linking the Philippines' more than 7,000 islands. Each seat is equipped with a headrest which can be adjusted vertically as well as on the sides. And waiting on the seat already is a pair of headphones as well as a blanket and a pillow. I'm 180 centimeters tall, and for me, the legroom is fantastic, very comfortable for an ultra long haul flight. Each seat has these little seat back pockets, which I find super useful, and of course, a regular seat back pocket. There's also a standard tray table, as well as an entertainment screen with the audio port and a USB port at the bottom. Code hooks are also available on the sides of the seats. Unfortunately, regular power ports are nowhere to be found, something that I personally do expect on a flight of this length, so that's a bit of a letdown. The headphones Philippine Airlines provides in economy class are surprisingly good and comfortable to wear. Kudos for that. Now, sit back and relax as we're getting ready for departure. 
to depart on schedule at uh, 6.45 this evening. And uh, our flying time is approximately 15 hours and 35 minutes. And we will climb to our cruising altitude of 41,000 feet. We expect fair weather during the flight with occasional clouds and light to moderate turbulence. Our estimated time of arrival in New York is at uh, 11 o'clock in the evening local New York time. And for your information, uh, New York is 12 hours behind Manila. Thank you for flying Philippine Airlines, the heart of the Filipino. Mabuhay! Hi, welcome on board this Philippine Airlines flight. Before we depart, we want to let you know how much we care about your safety. This is inspired by everyone in the country for the safety of everyone in this flight. Before settling down, be sure all carry-on items are securely stowed in the overhead compartment and small heavy items under the seat in front of you. Let us also ensure that all aisles and exit rows are clear of any items. Smoking in the airplane is strictly prohibited. This includes the use or charging of e-cigarettes. The AN puede. Also, tampering with, disabling, or destroying lavatory smoke detectors is a serious offense. Now that we're all settled, you can learn more about our in-flight safety procedure when reading the safety card found in the seat pocket in front of you. Also, Please be extra careful when handling hot beverages. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and relax as we're about to take off. We hope you enjoyed this in-flight safety video made by the Filipino, for the Filipino, and for the world. Mabuhay from Philippine Airlines, the heart of the Filipino. After takeoff, the crew handed out menu cards, which I appreciate greatly. This has become very rare in economy class since the pandemic, and you can see that Philippine Airlines offers a really generous selection of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages, as well as three meal services with two options each. Now dinner is served. I went for the pork stroganoff with fettuccine, carrots, and green beans. This was served alongside a vegetable salad, a warm bread roll with some unsalted butter, some kind of Filipino dessert, a little butterscotch bar again, 
as well as a beverage of your choice, or I went with some ginger ale. All in all, a delicious, sizable dinner service. And now we're settling in for the night. The lighting concept of the plane was also made by Lift Aero Design and includes plenty of different modes, including special colors for Filipino National Day and the various national festivals. Now they're displaying what they call Midnight Blue. The lavatories are fairly unremarkable. They're modern and inside they offer cologne, maybe because if I had some, I would have had to dispose it before boarding in Manila, right? After dinner service, the crew also handed out toothbrushes and toothpaste. Not really a full amenity ticket in a classical sense, but certainly a nice amenity to get on an ultra long haul flight. Now let's see if we can find something to watch on the in-flight entertainment system. Philippine Airlines A350s feature the Saffron Rafe centric entertainment system. They offer a fair amount of local and international movies and TV shows, almost all of them in English because English is one of the two national languages of the Philippines. Some music is offered too, but there are no games. A standard mapping application is installed as well. In-flight Wi-Fi is offered too, and Philippine Airlines offers 60 megabytes for free to anyone, which is really awesome. In addition to that, different Wi-Fi plans are available for purchase, with unlimited Wi-Fi for the entire flight setting you back 32 US dollars, which I think is a very fair price. Approximately halfway into the flight, right after sunrise, a mid-flight service is offered. This was not a full service and it's not actually possible to even do three full services on almost any plane simply because you can't physically store that many trays in the galleys, so on most ultra long haul flights one of the three services will have to be a bit smaller just to save space. But Philippine Airlines still opted to provide a hot dish, with the choices being lasagna or mie goreng, which are Indonesian stir-fried noodles, but I went with a lasagna. This was accompanied by some Filipino chocolate and another beverage of your choice. The lasagna was really good, but what I really love is the package design, which beautifully incorporates Filipino colors and patterns. The rest of the flight took place during the day, with not much happening. The crew did offer water from time to time, which is thoughtful. Around two hours before landing, the crew handed out hot towels, which is an amazing amenity to have in economy class. And right after that, breakfast was served. I once again went with the Western option and I do apologize for that, I usually try to mix things up, but the Western options on this flight all sounded so good, and they were. For the main course, Salisbury steak in a demi glace sauce served with scrambled eggs, button mushrooms and rusty potatoes. This was accompanied by a warm bread roll, some cut fruit and another butterscotch bar. To drink I went with my personal breakfast combo of orange juice and coffee. Another tasty meal service, although breakfast in particular could have come with another meal element, maybe some yogurt or something as well. Luckily I ended up having all three seats in my row to myself since the passengers assigned to them didn't show up, giving me plenty of space to make this video. As the sun set again, another one of the design modes by Lift Aero Design was put up, resembling a colorful Filipino sunset. In general, Philippine Airlines has a fantastic overall brand design throughout its cabins, soft product elements and ground experiences. The airline is just heavily constrained right now by its unsuitable hub, Nino Aquino International Airport, 
And this also forces the airline to sell some of their tickets, including mine, at bargainous prices. Even without the flight disruption and the free hotel night, meals and airport transfers, I highly doubt Philippine Airlines would have made even a dime of profit on my 425 US dollar ticket from Bangkok to New York. And in that lies the problem. No amount of great service, delicious meals, fantastic crews and state-of-the-art airplanes will make people pay a premium to fly on Philippine Airlines versus other airlines if the airline itself is unreliable due to its small fleet and its fleet is small because the airport couldn't handle a larger one. And therefore the only way to fill the planes is with low fares and that leads to unprofitability which the Filipino taxpayer will have to bear. But the problem is recognized, a new airport is under construction and when that opens, I do believe there is a place in Asian aviation for a major hub in Manila. The city is perfectly located to connect passengers between the southeast of Asia and northeast Asia and North America and between Australia and northeast Asia and North America. And Philippine Airlines offers a great onboard product to make them a confident choice. To and from Manila, I wouldn't hesitate to travel on them again as they were superb in all regards, from a comfortable and modern cabin to delicious sizable meals to a phenomenal crew and plenty of amenities from toothbrushes to hot towels and menu cards. Only that lack of power port on the A350 was a bit bothersome, which is a small issue in comparison. I am very thankful for everyone on the ground who organized such a seamless operation for a cancelled flight and I cannot wait to be back on Philippine Airlines. again to or from Manila, but I probably wouldn't choose them on a connecting flight because they have issues with reliability that have the root in the small so fleet and thank the you. overcrowded airport. With that, welcome to New York City and thank you for watching and coming along today's trip. Thank if you, you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to our channel as we have many okay, more episodes good. of Brutally Honest to come. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day. And special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a powerful online platform from which you can create your own website. Whether you want to start a blog, like we do, showcase your business, or simply share information, Squarespace gives you a wide variety of base designs to start off from and plenty of tools to manage your website, such as the possibility to provide gated members-only content or to send email newsletters and leveraging audience insights, all in just one easy-to-use platform. Create your own community with Squarespace's fully integrated commenting system, powerful blogging tools to draft, schedule and publish posts where you can embed your own social media posts as well and provide the world with your own product creations by using Squarespace's built-in inventory management, product promotion and bookkeeping systems. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash simplyaviation for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name. Thanks to viewers like you and sponsors like Squarespace, we're able to continuously increase the variety of airlines showcased on our channel. And we have many more to come. I'll see you on one of those flights again soon.